Hello everyone and uh, welcome back to the Bob Latino M25 tube amp kit build. So uh, part one was the unboxing and if you watched that you saw all the components. It doesn't look too bad of a kit. It's going to be pretty good. Today part two we're going to uh, go over a little bit briefly on what comes for the instructions for the kit and uh, we'll go from there and see how I'm going to start my own build. So inside the Allen envelope, I'm going to get my parts list. For the amplifier, you can see I did a parts check, a check on that. You can see Bob says, "Okay, shipped out to 11.19." Signs of Bob Latino. The other side has some do's and don'ts for your amp. You can read those. I won't go over those, but uh, read the do's and don'ts before you start the kit. So that's what I did. I did all the parts list check, and then <laughs> read all the do's and don'ts, and so it all makes sense. And then here is also another parts list. Uh, Sort of matches this one. This is, I don't know if Bob's aware, but the two things that were not there was the C, the C24 chokes, which comes with four with two kits, and the multi-section cap isn't listed on here. But everything else seems to be there. I didn't individually check all the fasteners because uh, I figured they'll be in there. If I'm missing one or so, uh, we'll figure it out. But I make sure all the components are there, and then I notice that this list actually has two components that aren't on this checklist. And then after that, it's basically a step-by-step. -step. Bob tells how to go ahead and build it. I read the entire, I read the instructions first, and uh, it all makes sense. And it's pretty easy to go over. And just like Bob says, very important, uh, very important part of this is just to uh, when you do one step, is to really look at the step you just did and verify that step was done correctly, and then move on to the next step. If you do that, you probably can't go wrong because you're going to be making sure you're checking every step as it happens. So, perform the step, verify the step was done correctly, move on to, to the next step. Now, there's also the, uh, at the beginning it says optionally paint transformers. So, uh, I certainly did that and I just used, I already had some, uh, some nice paint for that. So, I was using Duplicolors Engine Enamel. So, it's a gloss black. And that's what I use to paint the transformer. So I followed Bob's instructions. I just lightly sanded out the uh, the runs from the runs that you might find from uh, on the transformers from what do you call the material put on it? Jeez, uh, I'm getting the brain freeze here. Let's see here, it says in here somewhere. Yeah, varnish. So sometimes you'll see drips of varnish on there. So you sand down the drips of varnish, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then uh, paint the transformers where you want. Bob says, recommends to remove the, the fasteners, replace them with other fasteners, and then replace the fasteners that came with it so that you have the nice uh, look, the transformers with uh, the, the chrome looking uh, fasteners and the black or whatever color you painted. So I did do that. So I, I painted them. I'll show you them in a second. I'll show you them right now, in fact. Here are the transformers, uh, so I did some light sanding on the, uh, get the varnish runs off of the transformer plates. And I didn't touch the bells, I just cleaned the bells. The bells are in good condition, you didn't need to sand any of that. They're nice, but they were really just a protective coating on the raw steel, I think, from when they press, put them through the press. So there's really no paint protection, I don't think, on the bells. So uh, I painted over the fasteners, though, but I did... I have to still go. I think I can clean these off because I put a little bit of silicone grease on there just so the paint wouldn't stick, so I should be able to clean those. So I think they'll just come off. You can see how easily I can clean that off with just my fingernails. So I'm going to go and clean that off. So I took a Q tip and I put just a little bit of silicone grease on the fasteners. So I kept the original fasteners in, then that way the paint won't stick to the fastener and I can clean the fasteners off. The fasteners going to look like, look like uh, the chrome finish they have on them. So you can see how much better they look. For sure, it's nice and shiny and I put, chose high gloss black and they look beautiful now and there's no doubt so this is a necessary step I think if you want your amp to look with ice and uh, it's not too much work it takes some time take your time and sand them I'm not the best at this kind of thing I have a dusty room so you can see some little bit of contamination it's tried to do an industrial environment uh, downstairs in my basement it's not the best for that so I did get some particles in there but there's you have to look really close and notice it and it came, it came out well I'm really satisfied with the look it's gonna look nice on the amp and uh, so that's the transformer part. So we'll continue on how we're going to go start the build. So uh, continuing on with the uh, build. So we're going to start this morning. Uh, 
Bob for sure uh, recommends that you build one amp from start to finish, test it, and when it tests fine, then start the other build. So uh, I'm going to do what I might call a parallel build and then a series build. So basically the parallel part of the build is I'm going to do both driver boards. I'm going to do two driver boards during this bag. Do both driver boards now together, have them completed. And then I'm going to do both chassis. See the picture. So I'm going to take both chassis and put all the hardware in both chassis. So that's the parallel part of the build. So I'm going to parallel the driver boards and the two chassis. When that's done, then I'm going to take one amp and I'm going to concentrate on finishing that amp, testing it, and then uh, start building the second amp. So we'll be one amp at a time. I won't wire them together, but I'm going to do the boards and chassis together. I think that's going to work out pretty good. And uh, I think it's the best way. That way that's out of the way, the, just the bolting out of stuff and everything, and then I can just concentrate on the wiring in one amp and test it.